Hi, I'm Keith and I'm going to show you how to change the engine oil on a Ditchwich SK755. 13 sixteenths or in metric it's a 21 millimeter wrench. It's going to take a while. My oil level is right there on the top mark. Of course the oil in the line is still cold, so we have to wait for that cold oil to come out so the warm oil will start. On this engine, I used a Tecmo branded 1540. The 1540 is the type of oil that it is, depending on your climate and the temperatures that you're working your equipment in, depends on the viscosity of the oil. The 1540 is the viscosity of this oil, and the brand is Tecmo. If you want to purchase this oil, the link will be in the description. So the first thing you want to do with a small machine like this is you want to fire it up and you want to let this machine warm up because if the oil is cold, it's going to take a very long time to drain. So I've already warmed it up pretty good. So the next thing we're going to want to do is you want to lift the arm up out of the way because you're going to need to access in the side of each side and this arm and cylinder will be coming your way on both sides. There's a safety on each side so when you lift it up, we can put a safety in and we don't have to worry about it coming down while we're working underneath it. Now that it's all the way up, we can safely pull the safety release pin, let this safety drop down. Now what this safety does is if the arm starts to come down, it'll bottom out here and it won't be able to come down very far. I'll actually show you. See, as it hit here, it can't come down any further. I'm gonna put the safety down on both sides. Now you don't need to have it resting against the bottom, it's there just in case the arm starts to come down. I personally like to leave it as high as it can to be completely out of my way. If you want to put it right down onto the safeties, that's not a problem either. But either way, if these, both these safety bars are down in this position, this arm cannot come down and do any damage or hurt anybody. Now I already have this machine warmed up so I don't need to leave it running for very long. If it was cold, today is a little bit of a colder temperature, I would leave this machine running for at least 10 to 15 minutes before you start your service. Next, you're gonna open the hood. We're gonna put a safety in to hold it up. In a normal case, you have a safety lever over here, a locking pin that slides over and locks on this particular machine that's damaged so what i've done is i've just put a punch on this side holds the hood up it's safe the punch can't come out and i can work in here without having to worry that the hood is going to come down on me or the arm is going to come down on me so the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to start draining the engine oil there's two reasons you want to warm up the engine oil one so that it drains out faster and two you want to get all the contaminants in the oil mixed with the oil so as you drain it all the contaminants come out as well and they're not sitting on the bottom of the oil pan to drain the engine oil on this particular machine, it has a remote oil line that's attached to the bottom of the oil pan and it's so you can easily access it. On this machine, there's a little drain, little hydraulic cap right here on top of the fitting. That's the plug that we're gonna pull out to drain the engine oil. 13 sixteenths or in metric, it's a 21 millimeter wrench. You can see it's only draining a little bit. I've got the cap off. If we remove the engine oil fill plug, it'll allow it to vent and the oil should come out a little bit faster. Of course, the oil in the line is still cold, so we have to wait for that cold oil to come out so the warm oil will start. Sooner or later, it'll start coming out. <laughs> That's gonna take a while. While we wait for the oil to drain, as you can see, it's coming out very slowly. The engine is warm, hopefully it starts picking up once the cold oil is out of that remote drain line. Usually while the engine oil is draining, I'll change all the filters, I'll get everything ready. Uh, hydraulic filter, fuel filters, engine oil filter, get them all changed. By then, we're hoping that the engine oil is all drained out. Once it's all drained out, we can put the cap back on. To change the engine oil filter on this unit, there's three different ways that you can do it. I'm gonna go over all three ways, just in case you don't have the tool that I use. 
One tool is a strap wrench. It's a fairly basic tool, but you might not have it. The way that it works is it goes over the filter, it turns tight, you twist this and it'll turn it tight, and then you can put a ratchet on it to crack the filter loose and to spin the filter off. As we put it down, we go around the filter with it, and now you can see the loop is much too big. But if I put my ratchet on it, and I just start twisting my ratchet, it tightens right up. Now remember, this filter is pointing down, and everybody knows the rule of lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. In this case, to loosen it, you need to screw it down, which is going to be clockwise, righty-tighty, from the top, and it'll, it'll start screwing it down and away from the housing. That's one way to do it. Another way is a specialty pair of filter pliers. They're designed to grab grip on a filter, spin them loose. They are multi-purpose for multiple different types of filters. You can get these at most local tool stores, wherever you buy your local tools. And the third way is most people have channel lock pliers. Some people call them water pump pliers or pump pliers. They're adjustable to a different size and you can just grab onto the filter with these pliers, squeeze it and twist them off. So the reason we can't use the channel lock pliers here or the pump pliers is because these hoses here are in our way and we can't get these large pliers in here and get them past the hoses to get a good grip on the filter to loosen them. My preferred two tools to go to are the filter wrench here. I service a lot of pieces of equipment, so this is adjustable to all the way up to very large filters. The next one it would be would be this filter just because of the design of the uh, fingers, if you want to call them. They can fit in between hoses and grab on a little more than uh, the bigger channel locks. They tend to, the jaws get a little bit in the way of bigger hoses if there's stuff in the way. So in this case, we have a little bit of room in this, in this unit. So this is a little quicker to use if you have them. If you get the filter loose, you can actually spin it by hand. And then I always have a catch container close by to put the filter on. I like to flip it upside down, let the oil drain out so the filter has a very little oil in it and then I can dispose of this filter properly and I can dispose of the oil properly. Once you have the old filter off and you're ready to put the new filter on, we're gonna wanna lubricate the sealing surface of the filter. Some OEM filters will come with a little bit of grease on it already pre-lubricated. Most of them don't. So I always keep a little bit of brand new oil um, on my truck for this purpose. Some people use the, the oil that's coming out of the drain line. I prefer to use fresh, clean oil myself. You just take our finger, we go around in circles, make sure there's a nice small film of oil all the way around the seal. What this does is it prevents the seal from biting as it starts tightening up and ripping or tearing. And then when you go to remove the filter on the next surface, it makes it much easier to remove the filter. You wanna make it as tight as you can by hand. You do not wanna to use tools to tighten this up. It can cause damage to the filter, as well as the next time you take this filter off, if you make it too tight, it'll actually do damage to the filter housing, which is the part that the filter screws onto. Now this filter is tight, it's on. We are good to start this machine when it's full of oil. Now that the engine oil is drained, we're gonna put the cap back on the drain fitting and then we're gonna fill it up with engine oil. Now to fill up the engine oil, they put the engine oil fill quite far back in the machine. You can't just put a funnel in it and pour oil into it. Um, you can probably use little one liter uh, oil containers. In this case, I'm going to use a pour jug. Uh, you can also use a funnel if you have an extension hose. You can also get funnels with a longer neck on it that is flexible. That'll also help you. In this case, I'm going to use my pour jug. I'm going to put a extension hose onto the pour jug so that I can reach back to where the oil fill is and be able to get it into the engine properly without making too much of a mess. You want to make sure the inside of the hose is clean. If you use a funnel, you want to make sure it's very clean as well. We don't want to get any contaminants into the engine when we put new engine oil in. Because I'm using a long tube, it takes a little bit of 
little bit of time for all the oil to get through the tube. So I usually leave my tube in like that and I take my pour jug off the tube to allow it to pour in, to finish dribbling in, and then it doesn't make a mess as I pour it up, pull it out. You wanna constantly check your engine oil level as you're filling it up so that you don't overfill it. Now do remember, it takes some time because we're filling the engine oil from the top of the engine. It takes some time to get through the engine all the way down into the oil pan to give you a proper and accurate reading. The colder the weather is and the colder the engine is, the longer it's gonna take for that oil because it's thicker when it's colder to make it to the bottom of the engine. On this machine, on the dipstick, there's two indicators. You have a low line. If it's below that line, you need to make sure it's topped up. And you don't wanna go above the top add line. You wanna be in between. I like to be really close or right on the top mark. As you can see, my oil level is right there on the top mark. The add mark is down here. So we're nicely in between, really nice and close to the top mark. And we know that this engine has more than enough engine oil to run and operate correctly. Make sure we put the fill cap back on. You'd be amazed at how many people forget to put this cap back on and then they run the machine. Now that we're done everything, we're gonna close this thing up. First, we close the hood. Next, we want to lift the safety bars. And we want to safely lower the bucket to the ground. And that's how you change the engine oil on a Ditchwich SK755. If you watched this channel and it helped you, please like, comment, and subscribe.